Thank you for joining me for devotions this morning. I would like to share what I've been studying in Galatians 5, uh, starting with the 13th verse. And I want to continue with this theme of what does it mean to be this new creation in Christ? What does it mean to be filled with God's Spirit in this season of Pentecost and, <clears throat> and to be governed by God's calling? Uh, we have all kinds of governance in our lives. We have our the the local and the state and the and the federal government that is all a part of that. And we have different ways of viewing that uh, governance is uh, is and the value that it brings into our lives, or as some would would say, it's a tyranny. Um, I would probably not line up with that one. Uh, but Paul writes in an important way because there has been an argument that those who are Gentiles have to adhere, they have to become Jewish first. They have to adhere to all 613 commands of God, the laws of God, in order for the, the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ to be affected. And Paul says, no, that's just not the way it works. And, uh, and so he talks about freedom. What does it mean to be free? So we pick up with the 13th verse. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. However, if, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by another. This whole idea of freedom that we, the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ sets us free from the, from the bondage to sin and from the consequence of sin uh, in the sense that uh, it does not jeopardize our uh, God's love it for us and, and the opportunity for us to enter into God's eternal kingdom. However, Paul says, you're free. You get, to, you get to live the freedom in Christ. But do not use it for your own indulgence, not for self-indulgence. Instead, it is an opportunity through love to become slaves to one another. So he's actually talking about giving up that sense of freedom to be able to do whatever you want and 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 make it a subset of, of what does it mean to love? Because love is everything. That we become slaves to one another. Martin Luther talked about this in his treatise on Christian liberty, where he says the Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all subject to none. And at the same time, the dutiful slave of all subject to all. It's a both and. It's to understand that, you know, Jesus taught us that we, if we're going to lead from the top, we have to be served like a slave. That we love unconditionally, that we love our neighbor, that we are governed by how do we care for one another. But Paul also has a warning here. He says, if you're not going to listen to that, if you're going to participate in the bite and devouring of one another, if you want an example of that, just open up any social media network and look and see what is there and see how people bite and devour one another. How the, the caustic ways of talking and sowing division and, and you know, is, is right there. And people are able through social media to deregulate themselves so that they say things that in person they may not say. And so Paul says, be careful of that. Even though that social media did not exist in his time, that might have just been the, the plain old gossip tree that took place in communities. How we talk about one another matters. How we talk to one another matters. What is the nature of God's spirit within us? And how can we share that in, in important ways? And so there's a temptation for division, uh, for people to, to say, to cheer for their team and, and to put down others. 
uh, on social media, whether it's you're on the left or the right, and to, to, to say, I have no idea why anybody would choose the other. And yet the truth is, we don't have any idea because we only listen to the things that we already agree with. Instead of spending time to try to seek understanding and to seek understanding through love, to find common ground, a meme is a brief, insensitive way of expressing something that was probably going to be inflammatory. It doesn't get at the heart of the complexity of real life. And so if we have these, you know, share if you agree, you know, let's light up the internet with this. It's a way of sowing division. So let's be careful. How do we care for one another in love? How do we live that out? I know it's a struggle for me too. Because I see those things and it, and, it, and it gets me angry and upset and, and, uh, or passionate or things that I would like to forward but I choose not to because of those things that, uh, of those same reasons. And so I need help in this. I need that guidance of the spirit. But this is God's calling for all of us to remember that we are to be slaves to one another in love. What would that look like in our daily lives of faithfulness if we think of ourselves first and foremost as slaves to one another in love? I'll just let you ponder that because it's something I'm working on as well. Peace be with you. May God's spirit guide and bless you and lead you in faithfulness. Amen.